Disturbed and Daughtry at the Chase Center in San Francisco, Saturday, May 10th. Tickets go on sale this Friday at 10 a.m. at Ticketmaster.com. That is this Friday, October 18th. Don't sleep on that because you will miss out. Right, Mike? That was really good. That it's was almost really like I good. Did this for a living. It was almost like you did it once or twice <laughs> and didn't rehearse it at all. No, not even a little <laughs> bit. Actually, that is literally the third time I've said it because I had to say it once to Q Prime on the way oh. in, once to the station management on the way in, and then once just now. It sounded perfect each time. Did it? Yes. Thank you. Phew. <laughs> Apparently, I can still do this job. So, 25th anniversary, kind of crazy. It is. You it and is. I did an interview like in the way back. Okay. I want to say it was like a mayhem. Okay. That far back. Okay, that would make sense, sure. Yeah, and at that point, I asked you. <laughs> oh, God. So, you guys have kind of done it all at this point. <laughs> We were both new, right? No. I, <laughs> and I was like, I was like, how do you, how do you like challenge yourself now? You know, you, you had the big multi-platinum selling album, the big single, the tours around the world. You know, you were like established, and well, now that you know that on eleven. Uh, you know, we're just we're so blessed to be able to do what we do for a living, um, playing music for a living. Um, and then here we are 25 years later, not just still around, but relevant and still kicking ass. Um, it's a, it's a pinch me moment so many times. It's uh, yeah, you go back to when we, when we did the last interview you are talking about, um, at that moment, we thought we were, we were there, right? Yeah. And who knew there was still more. So, I mean, I guess where we are now, I mean, the sky's the limit. Um, we're just going to keep doing what we do and working hard and, just writing the music that makes the hair on the back of our neck stand up and uh that's it yeah what would be on the disturbed verbal vision board these days like looking into the future not just 26 27 28 30 35. oh man that's a great question right i mean because now you can look at you've got metallica you've got the rolling stones i mean the examples are there there's a path you can actually visualize it i mean i don't know maybe immortality yeah Okay. Vampires. Well, that, that, that would be fun, too. That would be the um, next step. I don't know. Um, it's, it's hard to say because we, we're still just blown away by mm -hmm. everything. Um, we're, all, we're always very nostalgic, and we always reminisce about so many things. And with the, uh, the teaser clips that were coming out before the announcement of the tour and the postings that they were putting out social media about the 25-year anniversary next year, we haven't seen a lot of this stuff in a while, and so it feels like we're reliving everything and just looking back like to what we looked like, what we sounded like, and everything that was going on in our lives and how much you has changed. You look exactly the same. Yeah, yeah sure, okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's Thank not you. a bad thing. You just have a completely different look. Yeah, no, I, I get bored easy. Yeah. I, maybe uh, ADHD or something like that. I'm constantly changing the look because I get mm -hmm. bored. Take, take me down memory lane. Go go to analog lane and, and tell me some of the things that really surprised you that were coming out from this 25th anniversary retrospective. It was really fun to see some of our old school like photos um, going back to, there was this place in Chicago in the south suburbs called Champs, a little dive bar. Um, at the time, we were considered too heavy to play the downtown Chicago scene. Like. Yeah. There were these clubs, like the, all the hip places, the mm -hmm. Metro and the Double Door and those things. Um, Smashing Pumpkins played there and Local H and Veruca Salt and all that style of bands. Like we weren't cool enough to be part of that circle. So we just kind of made our own scene. And so we went down to the South Side bars where we were from and, and we made a little like scene together. And with some of the other local bands we were friends with, we just, I don't know, we just created our own sort of marketing team and uh, a street team and we would just play out all the time um and just seeing some of these pictures just brings us back is anybody still around those bands that you played with back then that you could name check unfortunately none of the bands as a band exist uh -huh. at all anymore um we still have several friends that we keep in contact that we that we run into and whatnot but uh no i mean we're we're flying the flag for everybody these days so you and, are, it, and it's really cool because the friends that we do still know that used to be in the bands that we play together, they're like, God, we're so proud of you guys. Like, you're, you're like just raising the flag, carrying the torch for all of us. That's a lot of responsibility. 
Well, not that you put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> so what can we expect from the 25th anniversary show? Is it going to be specifically the Sickness album, or is it going to be a full retrospective? How do you how do you choose between the children of what to put in the set list? Okay, so, so uh, we've already announced that basically it's going to be like two acts. The first act's going to be the Sickness front to back. Second act's going to be Greatest Hits. Okay. Uh, plenty of surprises, especially from a production standpoint. We're planning on producing the biggest tour we've ever done. Uh, lots of fire, lots of lights, lots of toys, and a lot of maybe some memorabilia, some stuff from back in the day. Um, yeah. So how did you decide to bring Daughtry out with you on that tour? He was the only one available and said yes. <laughs> no, no. I, <laughs> no. <laughs> there was, yeah, there was a great list. Just kidding, list of, Chris. Yeah, no, just kidding. No, we, we, we know Chris. He's great. Right. Um, we play last year he came out to uh, one of the shows um nashville or something he came on stage did a song with us it was freaking awesome um there was plenty of bands that submitted but we wanted to figure like you know who who fits us mm -hmm. uh who's gonna bring other fans you know maybe we can win, o win over the net. he has more women in his audience maybe we can win some <laughs> of them over right <laughs> Now so, we know the real answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so trying to, he brings the women over. Plus, yeah, I want to find, figure out how to get as big as shoulders as he does. So he's going to be a trainer, too. He, is, he, I, yeah. Chris, I mean, you better look at the fine print on that contract. You might have to buddy. show up at 8 a.m. and train everybody every day. No, it's actually also kind of funny. This didn't go into the decision-making, but the way that it works out is so back, like, in 2001, Disturb went overseas to Europe for one of our first times as main support to Marilyn Manson and our original bass player at the time had an accident and was injured and couldn't make the trip over. So we had a guy that was a friend of ours back in the day fill in for us. His name is Marty O'Brien, and he currently plays oh. bass for, for Chris now. Yeah. Yeah. I know Marty. Yeah. Marty was, O. I think he was with Lita Ford when he I He was with Lita Ford yeah, for yeah, quite yeah. a while, and he goes back to the original days of uh, being in a band called Kilgore that used to be on Giant Records, which is where we were signed to Giant Records. Small so, world. Yeah. Yeah, now, so we, so us and Marty toured Europe together in 2001. We did the Monsters of Rock Cruise together, where I'm a host on the Monsters of Rock Cruise. Gotcha, okay. Yeah. There you go. So, small world, dude. It small is. World. It's just, it gets smaller every damn day. <laughs> so, with the retrospective, you guys being from Chicago, is there going to be some, like, Chi-Town flavor that you're infusing into the show? You know, there's a lot of people that are curious, and I just don't want to give all the secrets okay. away just Fair yet, enough. you know? Um there's a lot of stuff that's still in the works, a lot of stuff we're talking about. Negotiating Chicago dogs with Aramark or... Yeah, hey. I'm just so, saying. Somebody, somebody write that one somebody down. On we, that, we need right? to put that in there. I like it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so starting in Chicago, but now being a worldwide phenomenon, um, how, do you, how do you bring that flavor with you everywhere you go? Uh, Besides the hot dogs. Uh, you know, we got to just talk like a bunch of Chicago guys over by there and, uh, you know, some hot dogs and some pizza. It's all pizza. about the socks. Yeah, it's all about the, the socks. The bears. The yeah. bears. The bears. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> no. Um, I don't know. I guess maybe we just have Midwestern values. Uh, we like to work hard. We like to play hard. Everything we do, we take pretty seriously, but we like to have a good time, too. So... I don't know. On that note, one of my favorite things of all time is tour pranks. Oh. <laughs> so now I know what you're gonna say. Okay. No, I'm not gonna say it. I'm gonna ask you so that you can say best tour prank. Okay. Pulled or pulled on you, either or, your choice. Okay, so the best one that was ever pulled on us was in 2000 Ozfest. We were one of the side stage bands, and there was another band called the Deadlights, and we got really close with those guys. And they came out, it was, you know, it's, I want to say it actually may have happened here in Sacramento, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, whatever the, the the big amphitheater is out there. Uh, Cal Expo? Mountain View? No. Oh, that's Shoreline, Mountain View. Shoreline, okay. yeah. Anyways, um, we, <laughs> they come out. Oh, that out. was the show. That's the one we were at. Okay. <laughs> okay. We, I see what you mean. We, uh, uh, what do you call it? We were up on stage and they come out with, with squirt guns. And they just start, like, soaking us with squirt guns. And we're up there playing, like really like you're cooling us off it's crazy hot out right now in the middle of summer well that was the prelude to where they came out and brought bags of flour <laughs> they wanted to make sure we were nice and wet so the flour stuck and there was just in case you weren't sweaty enough right yeah. well you know 
David Draymond is a bald man, and so there was this mound of dough that was steaming on his head for the rest of the set. So that's probably one of the best that ever happened to us. <laughs> he cooked manna. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's basically the recipe, right? Flour and water. Is that what it is? Yeah. Okay, well, he had, he had a little doughboy head going on there. It was, it was pretty pretty funny. Oh, gosh. Okay, uh, I, I have a thousand things I could ask you between now and then, but we're a little short on time. Okay. So. I, I did, um, last time we talked, we talked about Bay Area Thrash and how you were a big fan. And uh, and I Te think that's- Testament was one of my favorites. Yes. Still is. And uh, and that, I think that's how we found out that we were both friends with Paul Bostaff. And I talked to him this morning and okay. he wanted to ask you a question. Okay, I'm a little scared now. <laughs> <laughs> you, no, you don't have to be scared. He's actually super Rolling. nice about it. Hey Mike, what's going on dude? Uh, Paul Bostaff here, been a long time brother. How you doing? Um, that's not the question I wanted to ask you, though. Um, so my question to you is, uh, what kind of drummer do you feel you are? Do you feel you're a rock drummer? Do you feel you're a metal drummer? Do you feel like you're a progressive drummer? Um, for me, um, I feel like I'm a metal drummer, but also kind of classic rock influence as well. So uh, kind of somewhere in between all that. So anyway, man, um, dude, have a good show. and uh, Or if you already played, Hope you had a good show, and dude, stay metal or rock and roll or whatever you are. All right, man. Oh, it was actually like a very serious question. That was. It was right. It was right after I interviewed him, so we were in a very serious interview mood. Yes. Wow. <laughs> Normally we're slamming drinks back. I thought there was gonna be something smart ass there. No, but, it was uh, first thing this morning, so it was all coffee. Oh, there it is. Okay. <laughs> Pour over. To, to answer him, I would just say that I, I feel consider myself a rock drummer. Mm -hmm. um, I like to play sometimes more complex polyrhythms, but I also just like to, to lay four on the floor, keep the beat for the guys. Um, I'm not overly flashy or overly fancy or overly fast, um, but I really love, I love playing power groove. Um, so I would say mostly just a rock drummer with who likes to maybe dabble with a little, I like to dip my toe in the metal water a okay. little bit. That's what I would say. Nice, nice. And then, uh Baby Huey's got a question for you here okay. real quick, so I'm going to swap out with him. Well, no, you can stay right there. It's all good. No, no, it's fine. What's up, Mike? What's going on, man? How you doing, dude? Dude, okay. Everyone knows I'm a huge wrestling fan. Okay. I love WWE. I love it all. Of course, back in the day, Stone Cold Steve Austin, he's my all-time favorite wrestler. Can I get a hell yeah? Oh, yeah. Also, Kerry King's favorite wrestler. Oh, nice. So, we all know Stone Cold's theme song, entrance music, iconic. You guys redid it your version of it i just would love to know how that came to be how'd you guys redo stone cold's shattering glass uh, theme song i don't exactly remember how the opportunity came i okay. just think that maybe the wwe or f at the time yep maybe asked us if we'd be interested yeah. i yep. don't remember how we got the opportunity we were like are you kidding me like this is amazing um and yeah man we, we were able to do it it was pretty awesome um I wish we were a, were granted. And that, first of all, we are very appreciative of the opportunity, yeah. but we were also like we were only allowed to do like that much to it. We weren't like to do like our thing to it. Okay, yeah, yeah to kind of stay were, true to the interest music. Well, we, we wanted to stay true to it, but we were very like limited as what we could do to expand, and you know, it is what it is. We're still proud of it, still happy. Did you get to meet Stone Cold? We, we did actually, and okay. Vince McMahon too. We. we uh, Whoa. When the song debuted as his new version yeah. of the intro, yeah, yeah, yeah. there there used to be a, a WWE cafe in New York City yep. in Times Square. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we flew out and we actually performed the song live. Yep. yep. And you know, Stone Cold comes out and we met Vince backstage. It was incredible. That's super awesome. incredible. Because back back then, I, I used to love all all those guys like WD, WWF, uh, WCW. Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah, man. Also, real quick, since we are the Bay Area's rock station, I do got acknowledge for a time quick period of time you lived in my hometown yes sir of alameda representing i did uh please just you know just your experience living in alameda i i loved it it was the first time for me that i got to like venture outside of chicago yeah. i was a y younger kid uh and to me i was living the dream i got i got the audition at the band with the band i flew out i threw my drums in the back of my van drove across country and that was like i was making it even though i had no money we had no food i lived in the band's rehearsal space i had a cot and a uh, sleeping bag behind my drums and that's where I lived 
I showered maybe once every two weeks when my band members were, because there was no shower in that place. Yeah. When my band members' girlfriends were off at work, they'd sneak me into their place, and I'd get to shower every once in a while and maybe sneak a meal. But you know what? I was loving it. I was living the dream. It, come to find out, we were neighbors. We're like three blocks apart. So where I live in Alameda, a few blocks from, you were telling me, the old movie theater, which has been remodeled, looks beautiful. But at the time, it was shut down and converted to a gym, like a gymnastics place. But you were standing right. upstairs where you were rehearsing. Yeah. That. That's awesome. Yeah, I don't think I was supposed to be living there at the time. We just had a rehearsal space, time but period. nobody knew. Right? Live work spaces. They're super popular right. now. <laughs> had, had I known you were there, I would have just come around the corner and shower at your place, dude. Totally. Right? Damn it. You yeah. totally could have. You could have had a hot dog at Pampered Pup. I totally. I, I do. <laughs> the fact you know Pampered Pup, that is an Alameda institution. So no. Is it still there? It, oh, yes. It's still oh, there. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, yes. I, I had. Uh, it's like a really spicy sriracha sauce Thingamajig. It was awesome. Nice. It's, but uh, yes, no. When you come to Chase Center, you're more than welcome to stop by. If you I need, need a shower. To go there. I'm gonna, okay. <laughs> we got a, We got a shower room for you already. Sounds good. Sounds good. Disturbed, the 25th anniversary tour with Daughtry is coming to the Chase Center in San Francisco on Saturday night, May 10th. Tickets go on sale this Friday, October 18th at 10 a.m. at Ticketmaster.com. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Appreciate it. Cheers.